Dear ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Leica Oscar Barnack Award Ceremony. Better we call it LOBA because it's a quite complex word. 2020. And I have to say that here in Wetzlar it's an ideal place to celebrate tonight in the Lights Park, the headquarter of Leica Camera AG. I'm also delighted to welcome all our friends of Leica and friends of photography around the world joining the event today via live stream. Hope you enjoy the sessions wherever you have find or found a stable VLAN connection. My name is Matthias Harsch, and as the CEO of Leica Camera AG, I thank you all for joining this event and to celebrate the 40 years anniversary of the most prestigious photo award around the globe. For over 100 years, photographers around the world have captured unforgettable moments and have with Leica cameras and have therefore documented history forever. From that time until now, Leica has influenced significantly the art of photojournalism, which is why we are so committed to this award. This award is for professionals and upcoming photographers who are dedicating their work life to stories, nice images, and even more. We are very happy that despite the difficulties with Corona, this event is taking place. And we have found together with the officials of the city of Wetzlar, I think a safe concept to celebrate tonight here in Leitz Park. Yeah, until very last moment, we did not know exactly the format which we, in which we will come together, but I think now we find a good hybrid on online and offline, as most of the people know in the, com in the company what that, what that means. At this point, I want to thank you, our chairwoman and anchor lady of the award, Karin Ring Kaufmann, the members of the jury, all candidates, and the entire Leica team, who all together spend a lot of efforts to make this project tonight a success. I think this deserves an applause. <laughs> now, before we introduce the guests to you in the series of this year's winners, let's welcome Manfred Wagner, the Lord Mayor of Wetzlar. I learned a new word, Lord Mayor. It's more than a mayor on the stage. He is, and we are really happy to have you here. So thank you, enjoy the night, and stay tuned. I tried in German. Meine Damen und Herren, sehr geehrter Herr Harsch, sehr geehrte Frau Rehn Kaufmann, lieber Dr. Kaufmann, ein ganz, ganz herzliches Dankeschön für die Einladung zum heutigen Abend zur Verleihung des Oscar Barnack Awards. Das 40. Mal wird dieser Preis verliehen und ich freue mich sehr, dass wir damit auch wieder die Stadt Wetzlar mit dieser Preisverleihung hier in den Mauern der Optikstadt in den Mittelpunkt, in den internationalen Fokus rücken und dass Sie den Preis aus Anlass over direct in the middle of the flood so a true photographer when you go there today and imagine how it looked like that's a true moment where he captured 
a bit, tiny little bit of Wetzlar history. Again, in the middle, kids do not realize that he's using a device which was not seen at this time. So, I think there's a true reason to call this Oscar Barnack Award as one of the photographers trying to capture moments in a certain way. And welcome you again for the evening. So, in these times of Corona, Michael should have been here, but he's in uh, South Africa, and at the moment, as you know, flights, tourism, etc., is a little bit problematic. So, theoretically, hopefully, we would have him now online, and let's see if technology works these days. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Michael. <laughs> Michael, great to see you again. You have here the um, members of the award ceremony in, uh, in Wetzlar. The last time we saw us, that was 2009 in Arl, at the stage of the amphitheater, handing you over the Loba Award for the series Beaufort West, quite a long time ago. But maybe you can tell us a little bit about this series, Beaufort West, the series and the place. Have you been back there since then? And if so, did you recognize some changes? Yeah, so thank you very much for having me. It's lovely to see you again from a distance. I wish we were back on that stage in Al. Um, and oh, I wish I was there, but um, this is as best as, as these times will allow. And um, very kind of coincidentally, I drove through Beaufort West um, two days ago. Um, I took one of the, the, the first trips that I've taken since Corona times uh, with my wife and our dog down to Cape Town where our families are. And to get from Johannesburg to Cape Town, you have to drive through Beaufort West. Um, so it's a small town in the middle of South Africa. Um, and when I did the project, um, you know, maybe 10 years ago, when was it, 2005, six, seven, um, eight? <laughs> um, I, I really wanted to make a portrait of South Africa in, in those times. I was inspired by David Goldblatt's seminal series in Boxburg, which said so much about a country through a portrait of a small town. So that's what Beaufort West was. It was my journey through that town to try and make sense of my social surroundings. Um, and, um, yeah, I was extremely honored and delighted to receive the Leica Oscar Barnack Award for, for this, this body of work, this portrait of this town. And driving through there the other day, um, it sadly hasn't changed much. It's been in drought recently. It's severely economically affected by coronavirus. I still have many people there that I'm in contact with um, on the phone from Johannesburg, and it was great to stop off and, and to see some of these people in, in Beaufort West. So that's my answer. Yeah, well, Michael, um, so um, another question I would have, since, since 2009, winning uh, the Oscar Barnack Award, did this give you a certain push to your career? Did it influence your career a bit? I think it's always hugely valuable um, to receive recognition. Um, it, it validates the work that you've been doing and gives you confidence to carry on working. And, and I think that moment in 2009 really did that for me. I was transitioning between my life in Cape Town and moving to Johannesburg <laughs> via this town halfway across the country. And yeah, the award really helped me to take that, 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 that work forward into what would be my next project, which was a six-year project in Johannesburg. Um, would you say this six, year, uh, uh, six years project would have been the most important project the last year? 
I think the most important project is always the one I'm busy with or the one I'm about to be doing. Um, so, so the six-year project um, occupied me um, just as Beaufort West did. Um, I tend to work in these very intense long-term ways. Um, but now, um, as you can see behind me, my focus is on something new. So, um, the, the, the project you're working at the moment, what is uh, the title, what is uh, uh, the idea behind? Well, my work has changed a lot and I think that, that moment in 2009 also gave me the confidence to try new things. Um, so, um, in 2011, I, while working on that six-year project, I, I made my first short film. And gradually, my work has pivoted more towards filmmaking and, and a studio-based based practice where I make animations, drawings, and paintings. So what you see behind me is now my animation, where I'm literally working in stop motion, frame by frame, to, to, to animate, uh, I guess, uh, a, a new kind of history. So we're looking forward to see something of your projects in future. Thank you again, dear Michael. And pleasure to talk to you, thanks to modern technology a few kilometers away, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you, and I really would like to uh, give my thanks again for the support over the years, and it's great to be in touch, and it also my congratulations to the people that you'll be announcing this evening. Okay, so Michael Zubotsky winning Beaufort West 2009. As you see, I'm back again. <laughs> we have to thank someone to whom we owe the Oscar Barnack Award. I would ask Mr. von Zydowitz on the stage. Mr. von Zydowitz sort of retired in 1999 without retiring from photography. And he helped in 1979 to create the first Oscar Barnack Award. So we're celebrating 40 years here. And by the way, I just saw that in 1994 uh, they had this publication Leica Galerie, which is still um, a very uh, r uh, rare item of uh, uh, printed photography. So we thought we would offer you a sort of thank you for what you did for Leica. The only problem I have now, I try to find out, we have four here. Uh, which is the right one? <laughs> When you come with me, Mr. Hans um we have found from the year 79 and completely refurbished an R3, R3, as you might remember, <laughs> and we dedicated this to you, dem Begründer des Loba, also Leitz Oskar Barnack Award, Herrn von Zydowitz, in großer Dankbarkeit zugeeignet. Lieber Herr von Zydowitz, it's always a pleasure to see you, and you know, he's still following very keen everything what happens at Leica, and you might remember he sent me once an email, and he said, Mr. Kaufmann, people have seen you in Al with an Olympus camera. <laughs> So <laughs> that means he's following quite keen the thing. But then I, t I told him, yeah, but I also had a Leica with me. So, <laughs> lieber Herr von Zydowitz, ein Dankeschön für all das, was Sie getan haben, das Schaffen des Oscar Barnack Awards. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. <laughs> you mentioned the Leica Gallery. Gallery. Yeah, gallery. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember very well, beginning of the 1970s, we decided to, to, to use the Leica 
not only for photojournalism or even for sports, but we de decided from that time on to bring the culture. The first thing we did, we founded the Leica Gallery in 1976. In 1976, in, uh, in August of 1976, we had the first exhibition. Then, as you mentioned, the year 1979 came, yeah. and we thought it over, what can we do with the 100th birthday of Oscar Barnack? There were some different uh, festivities on can say we offered the Leica number 1,500,000 to Dr. Friedrichs, at that time head of Deutsche Gesellschaft für Fotografie, and uh, the former uh, Minister of Economics in Germany. But somebody of us in our group, in our marketing group, had the idea we should offer a prize, an award. And as I was responsible already for the press and also for the cultural project of Leica, uh, I said this should be an international prize. They wanted, the, the, the first, my boss wanted it only for Germany. And so we found the World Press Photo as a partner. But there we, did, we, we were not allowed to say Leica Oscar Barnack Award because they wanted to have neutral. And Oscar Barnack, as a founder of 35 millimeter photography, uh, they could take. So in, but they changed in nine, the beginning of the 90th, they changed their uh, politics and we had to find a new partner and this was the Rencontre Internationale de la Photographie in Arles. And there, young, we needed a man for our service because we decided we have a booth and as so many Leica photographers come to Arles, they should have the possibility to let their Leica checked. And there was a young man who already reorganized the service, the technical service in our French representative. Former photo Tironti. <laughs> For my photo Tironti. Way back. <laughs> Way back. And so we found uh, in Arles the right per persons to be there until the year 2000. And this person is also sitting here, he is responsible for the whole camera business, it's Stefan Daniel. So, we have here the story of the Oscar Barnack Award, how it started, and here Hans Ginter von Sidowitz, he's still very active in photography, especially the DGPH, so thank you. And this might serve as a little thank you for all what you've done. Thank you very much. Geht, geht, geht. So a very warm welcome also from my side. It's so wonderful to have you here tonight, not only celebrating this prize online, but really to talk to you and that you are here. So thanks a lot for coming. And thanks also a lot for all our foreign winners, nominators, photographers, Leica lovers and friends from all over the world to be here online for this special 40th celebration of this wonderful award. So it's so important today to do these things not always only online, but to do it in real. So as we all are connected with love all over the world, so this ceremony tonight connects us because we have passion and love for photography all over the world. 
We changed for the 40th birthday this prize from a free submission to a nominated award. And I really have to thank Enrico Stefanelli, I hope you are here tonight online, for his support in helping to find so many wonderful nominators, 65 nominators from really 34 different countries, and they nominated perfectly. Each one nominated three for the main category and one newcomer. And of course, I really have to thank so many people supporting this award in these difficult times. And of course, I have to thank one person, uh, really very personally, this is my dear <laughs> Ina Sfayet, because without you, I never would be able to do this exhibition in the Ernst Leitz Museum. So really, thanks a lot for your wonderful work. <clears throat> so I don't know if, if you have seen already this exhibition there. We show upstairs 39 series. So this was really a challenge, also because we were not able to show all the series complete and to select the pictures, but we were able to show, we are able to show 39 series and 11 newcomers upstairs. So if you haven't seen it, don't miss it because it's really an experience and to walk through 40 years documentary photography and you can see how it changed this way of taking pictures in documentary photography. The Loba has for his 40th birthday this wonderful exhibition and as well together with this exhibition and this is what LFE did and I thank you, the whole team because it was a huge research for this wonderful catalog. So you have here inside all the complete series and you have the description of all the series and the photographer. You will get it at the end of the celebration and of course you also can order it online. So thanks a lot for this wonderful work. So, this award is really so close connected to Leica, to the spirit of Leica, and to the history of Leica, as we heard. But it's not only connected to the history, it's connected to us, to the human being, and to our wonderful planet, because we have, since 40 years, the same theme, the human being in reaction, in relation, in connection to the environment. So in this is that are we and our planet. Thanks to all nominators and thanks to all photographers for their work, vision and faith into photography. And as well, for their talent to look more deep into situations and to submerge themselves fully and totally into it. And in all our great series, we hi uh, you highlight some of the most critical issues on our planet. And I really also have to thank Whitewall. Mr. Niswand is here. Because you supported us in a wonderful way. Nearly the whole exhibition, which is shown in the Ernst Leitz Museum, is printed by Whitewall. And it, the, we work together so close and so wonderful. And also what you can see on the table, it's also printed by Whitewall. Mm. 
and I can tell you also a wonderful news and I really would like to thank you that I have now Whitewall as a partner for the museum as well. And I'm looking forward to work together with you also in Munich next week. So, Mr. Niswand, really thanks a lot. And also a big thank to Mr. Halbe. I don't know if he's also present. He should be, but I can't see him. Because he also supported a lot of frames for this exhibition. So thanks a lot. But what would be an award without a wonderful jury? So I really thank our jury members, Pauline Bentede, Klaus Kehrer, he also should be present tonight. I can't see him. Klaus, are you here? No? And Marlene Schulz. And I'm really happy, proud. We talked already together with each other for the press conference that Joel Myrowitz, if the technic is going, will join us online to talk a little bit about the jury process. Hello, my dear. It's so good to see you again. Did you have a wonderful afternoon and a walk in the sunshine? In, the, in Tuscany, can you hear me? Yes, oh, I hear you now. Yeah, if it was, yeah, I'm, Hello, Karen. I hear you. I see you. I just watched you dance across the stage <laughs> for the last 10 or 15 minutes. You were moving like a, like a young dancer. I have to say, great to see you. <laughs> thank you, Bravo. Joel. Yeah. Thank you. And I thank you because it was so special to have you at the jury because you are so, you have so a human approach. To, to judging about the series. And I would like to ask you, is it important nowadays to have such an award like the LOBA? What do you think? Oh, I, it's absolutely essential because the world is in a kind of evolutionary step right now and not only with the virus and how governments are behaving, but you know, the, the world is becoming younger in many ways, and there's an appetite among younger people to uh, express themselves. And if they express themselves through photography, let's say, then there should be a place of great esteem that welcomes them to show their work. Because basically what Loba is doing is saying to the, the young photographers of the world, we're interested in you. Show us what you're doing. We want to know. And, and that's rare. And I think it's so special. And I think coming from Leica, it is such a more profound uh, uh, award. It's not just simple recognition. It's recognition from the world of the best, the highest quality. So, yes, don't discontinue this award. Okay, perfect. So, was there something special for you in the process of the Leica Oscar Barnack judging? Yeah, and I know it's going to sound a little strange, but the process of judging is so complex. There are so many decisions that need to be made in a short time, and the agreeing with the other jurors and finding the right justifiable level a whole bunch of people together. That, that's always challenging, but it's also beautifully human as we all try to arrive at a consensus. So it was wonderful to see that. But the thing that was more important to me was that two or three days later, I couldn't get the photographs out of my mind. And I, I mean, you know, you walk away from some shows or photographs, you never think of the work again. But I found that it was such an intense overall experience that those 39 bodies of work were so rich and complex and humanistic that my heart was opened for the goodness that is in photography. 
that all these people go to such demanding and difficult parts of the world to express their concerns about climate change, about warfare or genocide or racial inequalities. These young people are believing in a goodness in the world by showing us the, the horrors of it. And so I felt them two and three days later, and that to me was the bigger gift of being a juror. This is, um, this is really, really wonderful described because I also found that the process was very special this year because we tried that everyone is also happy and thankful with the decision we really fight for. And was it difficult to find the winners? Of course, of course, <laughs> because there were enough really good work that there was a lot of pressure to get up at the top. And so we were, we were having to look at a half a dozen different works that were all in contention for the first prize and then try to find a value system to make one more or less than the other. Until we finally got to, we all could agree on. But there were, it was difficult. And my last question, dear Joel. If you had a wish for the future, for the participant, or also for young photographers, what would that be, this wish, for the LOBA participant as well for the younger photographers from our days? Wow. That's such a big generous, spacious question. I, I guess that I would wish for the younger generation that's coming up into photography with their passions and their causes and their, um, and their visual ideas, I would wish them to advance photography that way, but to keep one eye on the far past where the roots of photography began so that they remain attached to the ongoing evolution of the medium rather than think they can detach themselves and just run off, you know, because something gets lost then. I think the reverence for the past in continuity with the present moment is what makes it an art form If you throw away the past, it declines as an art form. It becomes just the, you know, a, a new, a new fat, a, a new trend. Trends are the best. So, my dear Joel, thank you so much. I hope I can hug you soon. So, hopefully, we will see us There. Next year in real, pay attention and all my best to you and all the best for your work on your book. Thank you, thank you so much. And I, it's always a pleasure seeing you and I hope everyone enjoys the evening. Thank you, bye bye, thank you. So before we now coming closer to the main issue of this evening, I would like to welcome double stroke, two wonderful musicians, Christian and Oliver Stör. They are very easy going here and they will start with the song photography and they are very welcome and they are well known and they are from Wetzlar. So great applause and welcome please to Double Stroke. <clears throat>
Good evening, everybody. And we try to be quick with that, so we're ready to go. There you are. Now, if you want it, you can have it. But you gotta learn to reach out there and grab it. Cause everybody wants some love. A shooting from the stars above. And though my heart would break, that's more than I could take. I could never get enough. If you need it, you should show it. Cause you might play so monastic that you blow it. Cause everybody wants some hope. Something they can barely know. And though my heart would break, there's more than I could take. I could never let it go. It's in a photograph. It's in a photograph It's in a photograph alone Cause everybody wants a dream Something they can barely see And though my heart will break There's more than I could take I could never let it be it's in a photograph It's in a photograph It's in a photograph of love If you blew it, then don't reject it Just keep drawing up the plans and re-erecting Just keep drawing up the plans and re-erecting Just keep drawing up the plans and re-erecting Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, lieber Stefan, we're here at the stage. Um, we have something. Yeah, <laughs> we have something indeed. Yeah, a little surprise, another little surprise. Um, so my question at the beginning would be, Gabriele Michalizzi, what was the inspiration he gave to us? Yeah, uh, a couple of years ago we got to know about Gabriele Michalizzi and um, his saying that a Leica saved his life. And um, these are the cameras Gabriele used, a Leica SL and a Leica Q. And he was photographing in Syria and he was hit um, during an attack by shrapnel. And he had one camera before his face and the other one in front of his chest. And you can see easily how these cameras look like. And without his Leicas, he wouldn't, maybe he would not be uh, here or he would have been much more seriously injured. You can also see that from his helmet and from his vest. And his vest inspired us a bit because this is a Kevlar vest, um, which protects from yeah, uh, bullets and so on. And um, yeah, uh, with that, maybe it's also time to honor these photographers, these reporters, the people who really risk their life on a daily basis. And so we talked and... We had, a, okay. we had a little yeah. discussion. I had yeah. a little bit of a, a weird idea. Um, can we do a camera which really saves your life? We should really do it and then test it. We shoot at it, etc. So it probably was a little bit too much. But it started this idea. Yeah. And uh, in fact... Hmm? Uh, this is the outcome. 
the Leica M10P reporter. We also have it here in real. So a glimpse. Yeah, yeah a little glimpse and a sneak preview of that camera. Uh, so that's a M10P. Uh, from a technical point, nothing really special, as good as always, but um, we have applied a very solid rugged uh, dark green paint and that makes the camera so special we have applied a Kevlar armoring on the camera. Yeah. So nobody has tried so far to shoot at it. Yeah. Maybe someday we'll do that uh, how, to see how it behaves but it gives the camera a nice look, a nice feel and um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful product. So. This is a sneak preview. Uh, the camera will be officially so launched. Hide it again. Yes, we do that. <laughs> Thank you, Andreas. Um, so the official launch will be uh, in January 21. And uh, yeah, looking forward uh, to another special model of Leica. Thank you. Thank so you. we're looking ahead. <laughs> So, now it gets more and more exciting. So, we hopefully can see our shortlist now. Yes. So, unfortunately, I also talked to Inas already that we this year are not able to show our shortlisted because this is such a beauty of difference from different views from 14 different countries and unfortunately not, but the shortlisted, at least nine of them, will be shown in December in a quite well-known museum in Shanghai, in the Skop Museum, and hopefully as well in South Korea. So, wonderful. So, now we come to the newcomer winner of 2020. And we will see his wonderful series first in a film. Our winner of this year is Gonzalo Fonseca. Please join me on stage now. <laughs> Normally, I always hug my winners. <laughs> that would have but been great. Because of social distancing, <laughs> just feel yourself hugged. <laughs> so, dear Gonzalo, can you tell us how you got the idea for this very emotional series about your hometown, mm -hmm. Lisboa. Um, yeah, thank you, Karen. Um, and uh, I just want to quickly begin by saying what a 
fantastic honor it is for me to be here today accepting this um, incredible award, um, especially in such a difficult year for all of us. So I'm really emotional, emotional and, and thankful uh, to Laika and the jury for selecting my work, uh, New Lisbon, from such a pool of incredible talent from all over the world. So thank you. Um, I also need to thank Silvia Omedes from Photographic Social Vision for the nomination. Um, and of course to all the people that have so generously uh, shared their lives with me in, in Lisbon over the past two years. Um, I want to dedicate the award to them and to everybody that is suffering with the housing crisis uh, in the city. So my heartfelt thank you to, to all. And the idea from, from the project began uh, after coming back home from uh, a, a trip abroad. Um, and I started researching and realized that uh, Lisbon was the city in Europe and the sixth in the world where it was hardest for its inhabitants to pay for rent. And this um, made me start uh, this project uh, um, in, in the effort that these individual stories would shine a light into a topic that is just of utmost importance, not only in Portugal, but in Europe and, and beyond. And especially now in this time of a pandemic that we've seen uh, when we were asked to stay at home, how important it is to have a dignifi dignified place to live in. And so, what happens when you don't have a home? And what happens when you're you know, facing eviction or living somewhere that is not your own and you're just uh, trying to provide a better life for your family? And so these were the, the doubts and questions that uh, propelled me forward to tell these important stories. How would you describe your photographic approach and how did you get in contact with the people? Because mm -hmm. I can imagine knocking on their door and open the very private room is mm -hmm. really difficult. Uh, it is. Uh, it was a, a challenge from the beginning. Uh, luckily, I was uh, um, able to, to get some support from local activist groups like Abita and Stop Chpais, who are doing really important work uh, there in Lisbon and have help a little bit with the introductions to people. Uh, other uh, families I've met on my own, just going to places. Um, but it was a definite struggle just to gaining the trust and um, just making people understand how important it is to have their stories told. Uh, because it's not you know, an easy thing to do just to share your most intimate mo moments with a photographer that wants to take that and show it to the world. But uh, a lot of families and a lot of uh, individuals have uh, accepted that challenge and um, I'm super grateful and forever will be to them for their generosity. Do you think photography can change anything? Because these uh, pictures were published quite, mm -hmm. uh, not only in Portugal, also in Europe. My objective is always to bring awareness to the issues that I'm working on, but um, I, I think that photography can uh, change the world in some instances. But for me, the main objective is just to, to make the people that I photograph to feel represented in the work and just to amplify the, their voices. And that is really what is fundamental for me is that I'm producing work that is honest and that is truthful uh, to the people that, uh, you know, that I'm photographing. And for, I felt uh, over the last two years that just uh, having somebody that is interested in, in them and their stories uh, is very, very valuable. Just saying, well, you matter and your story matters. And so for me, that is the first step in changing the world. It's just changing how people view themselves and amplifying voices. Isn't it wonderful to have such young photographers with this very human view on problems? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you don't go away. <laughs> So now, this one is already empty, this one was covered again. So yeah, I think this we, one is still secret. We, we take this one now. <laughs> Perhaps you can help me a little bit sure. to look under it. Do you have an idea? Uh, we'll see. Wow. Wow. 
<laughs> so it's also not, I'm not allowed to take this and put it over your neck, so please help yourself. It's yours. Oh, it's mine, okay. <laughs> yes. And I hope you will love it, you will use it, and please let's stay in contact and send me some pictures shot with your Leica. I will. Thank, Thank you, you for everything. so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. So the second highlight of this evening now, the winner of the 40th Oscar Leica Oscar Barnack Award. And we will also see first his film. <laughs> This here is Luca Locatelli. Please join me on stage. I really have to say also to you, Gonzalez, because one week ago I didn't know if one or both of you could make it to come here tonight. And I thought only to talk always to the screen is a horror. <laughs> so thank you both so much for being here tonight and to talk in person. Thank you very much, Karin, for, for having me here. I'm so grateful for this award and I'm grateful, grateful for who has nominated me. And I want to say thanks to Alice Gabriner and to everyone who's supporting my work. So thank you very much, really. Luca. <laughs> Could you tell us something about this winner series of future studies and the relationship between technology and nature? And what is the human being there? What is he doing? Yeah. Yeah, future studies is um, my approach uh, in in photography and filmmaking and um, it's, a, it's a long journey it has been like uh, almost eight years I'm doing this kind of, of stories and uh, it's a way to look at the present to unleash the future so exploring new ways to live on our planet and confronting which is what, what is really something big we are having in front of us, the climate crisis of the 21st century. So Future Studies is a series of stories that make visible the most promising example we have on the planet for fronting this situation. And of course technology has been uh, since centuries the the, the foundation of uh, our utopian visions and, uh, and, and the, the instruments we, we, we use for trying to solve our problems. And uh, 
And, and in this case, the combination between uh, people, uh, technology, and, and, and the environment, the nature, is, is, um, is what I'm, I'm analyzing with this series. Did your former job as a software developer influence your theory? Yeah, yeah. Of course, I uh, my 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 studies was like more in information technology, and I was running a company. I was developing a software my, uh, myself, and um, and after I've started to be a photographer. Uh, I, I put myself on the ground on social issues uh, related to the environment uh, in the Amazon forest and other many stories. And then in one point technology suddenly came back magically in my life. And, uh, and I haven't considered that, but it was the right combination between my passion on technology uh, apply to the other my passion, the environment and photography. And, uh, and from there, I've started to shoot the first stories and the first pictures. And uh, it was hard at the beginning because climate change back in 2012, they were not having so much space on the medias. Uh, but now it's skyrocketing the attention and so I'm having uh, thankful um, to, to everyone supporting my work, the attention that deserve this problem. So uh, technology for sure is, is one of the main um, components of, of, of my research. And your photography is not only reportage. How would you describe? It's also something else inside your photography. Yeah. Um, I get told more that um, it's not a reportage, and uh, and then I, I start to believe that, and uh, because I, I'm, um, I'm I'm passionate about art, and so I'm trying to ask myself when I shoot, um, what what is the right way to represent uh, this kind of uh, situations, and. Uh, so uh, it was hard to, to try to visualize th these kind of subjects and uh, because the information um, connected with all these pictures are deep and are verified by the journalist and the environmentalist uh, and the scientist I'm working with. So I need to find a way to express as best as I can and what I, I found is to try to uh, create images which they are not looking real sometimes. So they are looking like a render and, uh, and creating a dystopian vision of our future so people will be interested to dive in and then read the, the information connected and that match of art informa and information um, is what I'm trying to do with my work. And uh, I'm very happy if someone like you is, is recognizing that. <laughs> so you worked already on this project for seven years. Yeah. And you mentioned it today in the press conference. How many pictures you have and picked out, I mean, it is really difficult yeah. to pick out 18, not 20. He was allowed to pick out 20, but he just said, okay, 80 is good. From how many pictures you picked this series? Roughly, might be like 300,000, maybe, <laughs> because it's eight years, and there are old stories I've done in collaboration with National Geographic, the New York Times, so every single picture, there's a story behind, and, uh, and, and there's so many pictures, and, uh, and it was not possible, to be honest, without my team. So I have to say thanks to Anna, Tommy, Fede, and all the uh, people that are collaborating with me. And we have been through during the lockdown, which was the right occasion to stop and look over my, my work, making books, and package uh, future studies for being applied on this, on this uh, award. So it was a huge job because it's, it's too, sometimes I hate myself of having so many pictures. But, uh, but at the end, uh, um, 
the, the, the LOBA is, is, um, is possible to, to apply it for 20 pictures. And I was very happy that I even, you know, cut two, two pictures and <laughs> they are now 18. So it means uh, it worked to do a lot of editing uh, on, on the work of a photographer, yeah. And is the book... You finish the, the, your project with a book, or you go on with this project? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the book is it's going to be finished, but this project is just the beginning. Because, um, I mean, I think fronting the climate crisis is, is something that we need really to, to do it from now, because now, especially as never as before, we are conscious of uh, what happens if we cross the line with nature. And uh, so I think this pandemic, it's a great occasion also for asking ourselves what we need to do, because we understand now that climate change are real. So we need to open a debate and finding solution to survive on this planet. So, uh, I'm really hoping, you know, that will be my investigation forever. Forever. So, yeah. thank you a lot. Again, congratulations. Thank you very much. To this prize. Yeah. And now, I think, one, two, three, that one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that one, with your help. Wait, wait, wait. Wow. Voila. <laughs> thank you so much. This is... Incredible. I hope it will be your best friend. Yeah, I will be always with me. Don't give it out of your hands. <laughs> Never no, ever. Of course. Okay. <laughs> All Thank the you. best to you Thank and you congratulations right. both of you to this wonderful Thank prize. You. So now I say goodbye to all of you from all over the world. Thank you for joining us online. Have a nice evening or a nice morning or whatever, wherever you are. And I hope to see you soon here at Lights Park or somewhere else on this planet. Take care and thanks for joining this important ceremony. Bye-bye. <laughs>